Hello viewers, welcome to this video. In this video, we will see how to create our first VM instance in Google Cloud. All right. So I've logged into my um, Google Cloud console here and um, I'm in my Just Me an Open Source account and connected to the Just Me testing project. So let's see how we can create our first virtual machine. So on the left sidebar here, if you go down to Compute Engine and VM Instances, you can click from there and if you uh, tend to use a service frequently you can pin the service at the top here so you don't have to scroll every time so for example if you keep using compute engine quite a long uh, quite a lot then you can click on this pin icon that will pin the entry at the top here so you can go straight from here or you can always search in the search bar so there VM instances Okay, so compute engine instances, compute engine. So that's going to take you to the instance group. So we don't have any instance. Let's create our first instance. Okay, so before creating the instance, let's take a look at what else we can see here. So disk. So we don't have any disks at the moment. So once you create a virtual machine, you will have a disk here. And we don't have any snapshots. We can create a snapshot from the disk. We don't have any image. We can create a machine image. Uh, these are all publicly available image but if you want your own image you can create an image from your virtual machine which we will see in a later video okay so vm instance let's start creating our first virtual machine create so give it a name let's leave it as instance dash one um, or if you want you can give it any name and as you choose different configuration options here you will see the uh, rough uh, price estimate here okay so I've got my uh, free trial credits remaining and it will be uh, used and you can see a monthly estimate. It won't be an accurate uh, price, but it will be a rough estimate. And as you keep changing the configuration of the instance, you will see that getting reflected here. OK, so OK, let's start doing. Let's start configuring the instance the way we want it. So instance name, let's leave that as it is label. Labels are like if you've used AWS, you attach tags to various resources. So here in Google Cloud, uh, we use labels. So add a label, I'm gonna say, let's say environment, environment is testing or something. And then let's call app, uh, web, so whatever you want. So just attaching a couple of labels there um, region I want to choose London region and uh, you can choose any zone here I'll pick that one here okay so as you see here when I change the uh, region uh, the machine family here also changed slightly so if I go back to uh, whatever it was US Central so now you can see there's uh, different types of machines that you can launch so there is this general purpose it's optimized for cost and flexibility and there is this memory optimized and you've got compute optimized instances say for example if you look at the machine type here c2 standard 4 c2 standard 8 c2 standard 16 so 4 is 4 cpu the number of cpu you've got so 4 cpu 8 cpu 16 30 and 60 cpus okay so how many how many how much gig of memory you get per cpu so if you look at this uh, compute optimized instance types so for every CPU, you get four gig of memory. So for four CPU, you get 16 gig. For eight CPU, you get 32 gig, 16, 64, and so on. So that's compute optimized. Uh, the, uh, the prime concern is about the number of uh, CPUs, the vCPUs you get. So that's compute optimized. And memory optimized, if you look here, you get 40 CPU, 961 uh, memory. That's ultra mem 40. So 40, 80, 160 are all CPU and the number of CPUs and so on yeah and the point that I was trying to make is uh, depending on the region that you select uh, the, the machine types also changes so for example if I choose London and uh, Euro West 2A you see my uh, memory optimized uh, machine type disappears so I won't be able to create a memory optimized I won't be able to choose a memory optimized machine if I were to go in the London region and especially in this particular zone okay if I change the zone you can now see memory optimized and so on all right let's go with 
and in general purpose i'm going to choose there are different uh generation of machines that uses different uh processors and so on so uh for our first generation if you select first generation you get the uh, the shared machines f1 micro um, so that falls under the free tier so now if i choose f1 free tier uh, you can see here the price changed considerably so now i'm only paying like five dollars a month uh, so 10 gig standard persistent disk which will come to in a minute so that's the disk here and that's the instance type and for sustained use discount so basically if you run this instance um, throughout for the entire month you will be paying five dot thirty nine five point thirty nine dollar a month okay so now if i change that to let's say 96 cpu and 360 gig of memory you will be paying three thousand dollars a month mm, cool okay so let's go with f1 micro okay so we've selected the instance name we've selected where we want to launch the instance which region and which availability zone we've chosen uh, the type of machine that we need to launch and now it comes to selecting the boot disk okay so um, by default you get this 10 gig standard persistent disk debian linux 9 if you look at the pricing here 10 gig standard persistent disk 48 cents a month okay let's change it so there are public images that you can use as your disk image custom images or if you've got snapshots um, you can use that snapshot in a later video we will see how to create a machine from a snapshot or from an existing disk of any other virtual machine so we don't have any existing disk or any existing virtual machines so if i go to public images i can choose centos 7 choose centos 7 and the size of the disk i can go with 30 40 whatever it is let's say i want to go with 30 instead of standard persistent disk i want a fast ssd disk and so on select and now the pricing shows um eleven dollars a month okay so change i'm going to use uh the default one debian debian 9 let's go with 10 gig ssd standard persistent disk select and now we are back to five dollars a month okay cool so we've set uh the boot disk okay and then if you click on here management for advanced options so we have management security disk networking sole tenancy and so on okay so let's look at the networking so here you can specify network tag so when it comes to creating firewall rules um as i said previously in a, in a different video when you are creating firewall rules you can attach that firewall rule to a specific instance so that's based on the tags that you associate uh, with your instance so now i can say uh, the network tag let's say web i can attach a network tag I'm calling it as web and when I create a firewall rule I can specify the tag to be web and the firewall rule will be applied to all the instances that has this network tag attached okay so I'm not worried about that right now and if you want to set a host name you can set that here and if you don't specify so that's the default host name that that will be assigned to your instance to your virtual machine but if you want to customize your host name you can specify it here and network interface um, which network so we've got just one vpc so that's selected and in that vpc we have two subnets we created two subnets in the previous video so we can choose which subnet we want and then primary ip address it's like the uh it's the internal ip address and the external ip address ephemeral or you can create your ip address uh, if you want to have a static ip address you can create it okay all right so that's uh the network and the disk you can say you can tick this option basically what it does is when you delete your virtual machine it also destroys it also deletes your um, underlying disk so that you can save some cost uh, but if you want to for some reason if you want to retain your disk after deleting the virtual machine um, you can uncheck this option and that will keep retain your disk even after deleting the virtual machine so i'm just going to tick that one okay so let's create this virtual machine it's going to take uh, uh, less than a minute i think and let's wait for this instance to come up and then let's see how we can um, access this machine 
all right okay so that was quick so we've got that machine that's created and we've got in the notification area all right so that's the internal ip 10.0.1.2 uh, that's the um, ip range of my first subnet in uh, the london region and we've also got the external ip address and if we click on the instance we will get more details about this instance okay so creation time the network interface which vpc and which subnet it's attached to and all those details and you can also look at the monitoring tab since we just started the instance we don't have much uh, data uh, for this time period so this is where you look at the monitoring okay so how do we access this machine there are a few ways you can access this machine so if i click on this one um, you can either launch the ssh client from your browser you can use your google uh, cloud shell or from your own machine you can use g cloud to access your machine okay first let's look at the in browser connectivity i'm just clicking ssh and it says connecting transferring ssh keys to the vm all right so that's connected and i, I can also change the text size to largest okay ls block so that's the machine host name instance one do i have sudo access sudo yep i do i can do cat etc os release that's debian stretch version 9 okay cool so that's one way of accessing uh, your machine and you can also use google cloud shell and um, open view g cloud command okay so that's the g cloud command g cloud cli um, command to access your machine run in cloud shell okay so it's spinning up the cloud shell which is a temporary machine and i've done a video on uh, the google cloud shell you can go ahead and watch that video and let's wait for the machine to be provisioned and there we go and it has okay and that's the command to um, ssh into that machine so gcloud beta compute ssh which zone and what's the instance and what's the project and if i hit enter and we are now connecting to the machine so it's generating the ssh keys now and once that keys are generated it um, sends the key it copies the keys to the to the instance one instance and then we should be able to access it all right so we are now logged in cat etc os dash release host name instance one exit out exit okay so that's the other way using google cloud shell you can access this machine uh, but if you want to access uh, from your machine where you've got gcloud installed so i've got G cloud and G cloud config configurations list configurations list I just want to make sure that I'm connected to the right account so default the current account that I'm connected to is just me an open source the project that I'm current connected to is just me testing yep just me testing that's where the instance is uh, provisioned okay so now I can do G cloud compute instances list all right so we've got that instance and we can do g cloud compute g cloud compute ssh instance one updating project ssh metadata so soon we will be logged into that machine all right cool so i'm logged into that machine cat adc os release debian stretch 9 host name yeah everything is looking good and i've connected to that from my machine where i've got g cloud cli installed and if i do ls minus l dot ssh so those are the uh, public and private key pair that i've used to log into the uh, so when you are using gcloud compute ssh for the first time it will create the uh, the key pair automatically for you 
and then it will also transfer the key uh, it will transfer the public key to the machine that you are connecting to for the first time and then you should be able to use your G Cloud tool to log into your machine <coughs> okay cool so that's what I wanted to show you in this video in the next video we will see how to create a, a snapshot um, of this instance and then launch another instance from the snapshot okay so the, the, the instance is running and if you look at the disk here you will be able to see the disk yep so that's the disk uh, that we used hide info panel uh, instance one the disk name is uh, based on the name of the instance that you created it's a standard persistent disk 10 gig um, in use by so that's the instance that's using this disk at the moment so the next video we will create a snapshot of this uh, disk and then from based on that snapshot we will create another instance All right so thank you so much for your time watching this video i will see you all in my next video bye bye